guys, it's Jenny with the Go Box, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys a fun little raccoon that has lots of flowers around its neck and ears. It almost looks like it's getting ready to go to some fancy forest festival. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it, what colors to use, how to draw it, how to paint it, all the fun stuff right here, right now. And let's, uh, let's give a quick talk about colors that we need. So each of you who got the kids crate, you have your, let's see, five colors. Black, white, and then you have a yellow, blue, and red. So those are your three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. And then black and white are on there, or in your kit. And we get to do some fun color mixing today. So I'll show you how to do it. Let's uh, I'll have the camera zoom in here on the paint palette. I accidentally got a lot of black on here when I was squeezing it out of the bottle. You won't need that much. In fact, we don't use a huge amount of black with the painting. We do make some gray with it later on, but not, not as much as, as I put out here. And then of course we got white. This we call sapphire blue, daffodil yellow, and ruby red. These will all make some fun flower colors later on when we uh, get the raccoon part done and then we'll add all that, that fun forest fluff to our cute little raccoon. Um, first off, I want to tell you, you can paint your background color any color you want. I'm going to teach you how to paint the back or how to mix the background color to be that light sort of minty green color that you see on the original painting. But feel free to do whatever color you want. If you want to do like a sky blue, you would mix white and blue and that's pretty simple and then you can paint the whole background blue. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and plan on getting started. You should have a little handful of brushes. I use three. I use a big brush for painting in the background in larger areas. And then I have a medium sized brush, which I use for uh, areas like on this painting, we would use this for the ears and some of the fur. And then our tiny little detail brush is what we use for painting the eyes in and anything that requires tiny little lines. So those, that's what you'll need. You'll need a paper towel or an old rag for drying your paintbrush off when you clean it in water. And then you'll want a mug or an old cup or paper cup or something like that to have a little bit of paint water in there. A little, it's clean water to start it with anyways. And that's what you'll use to wash your brushes off. You don't need a whole lot of water because what happens is if you accidentally knock it over, you're gonna spill a whole lot if you have a whole lot of water in there. I learned that from almost 10 years of teaching in the studio that if I fill the cups up with just a little bit of water, it does the job, but then there's way less spillage going on if it, if it gets knocked down and they do get knocked down a lot. Okay, let's, let's mix a color now. So I'm gonna take my biggest brush to uh, mix the color up. Let's go ahead and dip it in the water cup and just kind of brush it across the bottom of your cup real lightly just to wake up those bristles and loosen them up. And now I'm gonna pull the brush out and then try it by dabbing it two to three times on each side. Make sure that you don't have water collecting on this metal part. This is called the ferrule and that's what holds the brush bristles to the wooden handle. Um, let's talk about our background color. Now remember, you can do whatever you want for background. If you want to make pink, you'd mix red and white, uh, like a light yellow, white and yellow. You can make a deep green by mixing the blue and yellow. And uh, we're gonna actually mix these three colors. Not a ton of this and not a ton of this, but a lot of white. We do use white later on for the raccoon to make the gray. So make sure you save a little bit but if needed, you can always get some more out of your bottle. But let's start off by pulling some white aside. Just gonna scooch it over here. And then I'm going to use the corner of my brush and pick up a little bit of blue. Not a lot, because I like to start small, just knowing that I can add more color if needed. So this is where you'd get your sky blue. And I'm going to turn it kind of a sagey or light sagey green or minty green by adding the yellow because blue and yellow mixed together make green. And we have the white in there to lighten everything up. So I just pulled off a little bit of yellow. Gonna mix that in here. And I feel like looking at mine, I could use a little bit more blue just to deepen it. So I'll use the corner of the brush again. Add some more in there. And this is how we do it. You just keep adding color 
to get it where you want it to be. So I might just add a little more blue and now I'm gonna add a little more yellow and this looks, this looks about right. Pretty close to what's on the original. It doesn't have to be exact. I have a lot of paint on the big brush and that's just from mixing it. Let's not waste that. We're gonna use it in a minute. So go ahead and set your big brush down on your towel but don't disturb the paint because we'll use this in just a few minutes. We're gonna do some drying now. I'm gonna move this aside Let's pick up our medium-sized brush, which it, I often call it the mom brush, dad, mom, and baby, what, however you want to refer to them, or large, medium, small, whatever works. Let's go ahead and dip this brush in the water, swish it around, brush it on the bottom of the cup real lightly, and dry it off. Dab it a couple times on each side. Some of you might have a round brush like this one, some of you might have a flat brush. They all work. I've used all different kinds to make lots of different paintings, so you can use whichever kind you want. Let's go ahead and dip this brush into our greenish minty color we made. And I'm gonna start off by making a dot right in the middle of the canvas, or kind of in the middle, it's not exact. I'm not using rulers or anything like that. I just sort of eyeball it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw this, the face right around this, so it's just a big circle, kind of like the size of, if you've ever gone bowling, it's about the size of a small bowling ball, like a six pound bowling ball. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll come up above this dot, maybe three inches or so, make a mark, and then I'm just gonna lightly trace or dot out, whatever makes you comfortable, a nice round circle. I have a little bit of space on each side. If you mess up and need to redraw it, that's totally fine. I redraw things all the time because I know that as I paint things in that we're going to add more and more paint and things get covered up so you can, at this point, you can redraw things however you want. So this looks pretty good. I do like it to have a slightly pointier chin so I'm going to come down here and just make this down to a kind of a rounded point. So it's like a circle with a little rounded point bottom. Give our raccoon a cute little chin. And then we're going to make the shoulders. So just on either side, way out here, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring a line down to this corner and one down to this corner that kind of matches. So just dot it out. Remember, you, you can redraw if needed if you make your raccoon a little too skinny. That seems to be the common thing. Sometimes I've noticed that we have a tendency to make them a little skinnier than they need to be, but a nice fluffy rounded raccoon makes a super cute painting. And I just dipped my pinky in yellow. <laughs> That's okay, I usually get paint all over my hands. All right, ears. So our raccoons have little rounded ears, kind of like a bear, only a little bit smaller. I think on the original I probably made the ears a little bit too big, but then I, I was able to draw lots of cute flowers around them. So just draw a little half circle over here and then one over here. They don't have to be the exact same size. I bet raccoons are slightly different just like human beings are. Where you're like maybe you have one ear lobe that's slightly bigger than the other. That's what I've got. I've got one ear lobe that's a little bit bigger and one that's smaller. It's really bizarre. But we're actually not symmetrical. If you were to, to divide your face and look at every single feature, we're not perfectly symmetrical. So you might have one eyelid that's a little bit larger than the other. Funny the way things work. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and let's draw the inner, uh, actually let's draw the, I'm looking at my pictures. It's been a while since I designed this painting. <laughs> let's draw a smaller little half circle that will be the inner ears later on, like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and just draw the eyes and the nose, just to mark them off. Because we're gonna draw them in green, this green background color. But they obviously, later on in the painting, they become completely different colors. But I do like to have the space marked off. So I'm going to go from this dot here, just float over here maybe an inch and a half or so and draw a little circle. About the size of one of those big glass marbles. If you've ever gotten a pack of marbles, there's lots of little ones and then there's always that, that one big one. One or two big ones that me and my siblings would always fight over. <laughs> And then I'm going to match it up with this other eye. Just try to make it similar in size. Remember, it doesn't have to be exact. Your eyes can be far apart or they can be a little closer together. Later on, we draw black 
over this and then we redraw the eyes anyway. So this is just kind of place holding for us. And then I have this raccoon design so that the nose is farther down on the face. So I'm gonna draw a little oval shape right down here, right above this pointed chin. And again, really easy to redraw and fix up anything that you need to as you go along. You can pause the video if you need to redraw anything or if it feels like I'm going a little too fast. That's what that pause button is. Too bad we can't do that in the studio. Sometimes if the instructor's going a little fast, wouldn't it be nice if we could just hit pause? <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Okay, now I'm going to pick up dad brush again, or your largest brush. And let's go ahead and paint the background all around the raccoon. So we're going to leave the raccoon white with green features. And then I'm just going to take... And I like to just dab the brush down. You can go up and down and side to side, but... I kind of like a little bit of a messy, sloppy background, so I do a lot of this sort of brush stroke where I'm lifting and tapping the brush, tapping it down on the sides. I'm not poking up and down like that because that destroys your, your brush bristles and can make them really flared out, which you don't necessarily want. Some brushes or some certain painting styles, flared out brushes work really good, but I try to keep my brushes pretty nice so that I it can extend the life of them. So as I'm doing this, I'll do slow motion. See how I'm kind of bending it and using the side? I'm not poking up and down, it's just a little swipe. We're doing a little swipe. Now I know most of you have seen raccoons in real life. They're pretty common, uh, at least here in Oregon, we get quite a few around. Um, I live in an area that's lots of sub suburban houses close together, but it's in the country and it's surrounded by a lot of green space. So somehow the raccoons find my backyard koi pond and we've had some koi become meals along the way. So we've had to uh, make the pond a little bit deeper and make it harder for the raccoons to get to where they can get the fish. We've created a lot of little hiding spaces for the fish because the raccoons will eat them. Raccoons themselves are so cute, but my gosh, I don't like it when they're eating my cute little fishies that I paid good money for. And then, uh, yeah, when I grew up, I lived out in the country on larger property. And so we had almost nightly visitors of raccoons because we had a lot of neighborhood stray cats that my mom got in the habit of feeding them. And if that ever happens, then they're with you for life. They basically become your cats. And so the raccoons would come and they'd steal the cat food. And it was actually really funny to watch because they have these tiny little hands with longer fingers. Like you'd think that they have like, would have like little cat paws, but no, they've got these long fingers with little nails on the end. And they would watch us through the window and they'd grab the cat food and then they'd eat it. And then they'd reach out and they'd grab some more and eat it, watching us the entire time because they knew they weren't supposed to be doing that. And they were so cute that we just kind of let them do it. But then we had not only stray cats, but we had raccoon families visiting us too. <laughs> it was pretty funny. We used to sleep outside sometimes in the summer. I'm just going to talk while I'm painting the background. And uh, out on our deck. Because it would be hot and the house didn't have air conditioning. It was an older house. And uh, I would always worry. I would like to put my head way under the sleeping bags. I'm like, I don't want the raccoon to come like touch me while I'm sleeping. <laughs> so... That's what happens when you sleep in the wild. Who knows what kind of critter is going to come. Oh, you know what? This is really bright on here. You can see it's a little overexposed. Let me just adjust this light. There. I think that's a little better. I'm just looking at the monitor here. You guys keep painting while I adjust. Boy, that's bright. Maybe it's from this other light. Still pretty overexposed. Let me turn this one a bit. Well, it could be because 
the color, there that looks pretty good. The colors are so light on this for this background stuff. So I apologize if I was painting away and you couldn't even see what I was doing. We've got this very light colored animal that looks kind of like a bear and this is where you could turn it into a bear if you ever wanted to make this painting again or a, you know another wildlife version if you had another canvas. Very easy to turn this into a bear. You're just going to you know you paint it brown without those funny little black patches on the eyes and all that. So I'm gonna wash my brush off now. Oops, splattering water everywhere. Just kind of lightly brushing it side to side. I don't know that we use this big brush anymore. We might, but it might just be down for a nap for the rest of the class. All right, so let's go ahead and go straight for black paint. I know that's crazy, isn't it? I usually don't go straight for black paint this early, but we're gonna do it. I'm gonna take my middle size brush and I'm gonna move this aside black paint this part's pretty easy just dip your your brush in your black and i'm going to create so they they have these the bandit mask and it i looked at a whole bunch of different pictures of raccoons so i could figure out how to do this because i've taught one before and it was a little i ended up making it a little more complicated than it had to be so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come up and right before I get to that, I'm going to round and come back down. So it's kind of like, this looks like a ghost shape. Like a ghost is peeking in from the side. And then I'm going to try to match it up as close as I can over here. So I'll start at the top, almost like I'm giving him an eyebrow. Look at that. Oh, he's got a smart little eyebrow. And then angle this down. And then I'm going to come around this way. I'm going to turn it into, like I said, the ghost shape. It's hard to get them exactly the same. Just try to get them close. I sometimes will just go back and adjust. If I made this one too big, I need to make this one a little bigger. And then I keep going and going until the whole thing is black, but we don't want to do that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and color this in. Now we're going to go right over the eyes. I know that seems really weird, but go ahead and color the whole thing in. You know, I think this weird light phenomenon might be coming from this other... LED light that I have in the corner. Oh well. Well, once we get some color on a raccoon, we'll be able to see things much better. Okay. I just need to stop fighting it. <laughs> so you can see. There. What I need is a little easel. All right, so let's fill that in. So we have these two black ghosts. Doesn't it look crazy right now? Like what in the world are we doing here? As I get to the bottom here, I want to make the raccoon have fluffy cheeks. So I'm literally going to extend beyond the, the edge of the face and make these little fluffy hairs that sort of flick out into the background. Like our ghost has raggedy, raggedy sheets. <laughs> so it makes our um, raccoon look really whiskery and cute. I probably went a little overkill on that one, but it'll just be a shaggy, shaggy winter coat raccoon. He's grown out his winter fur. Or he's just trying to impress somebody with his fancy whiskers. So just try to match this one up. I know it looks really super funny right now because we have no other features on here and now there's no eyes. But we're just gonna roll with it. I promise it'll all come together just like all the paintings do. So let me tilt this just a little bit as so you can see. Yeah, funny. You can see I'm just gonna Oh, I know what's wrong. This happened last time. Paul. I'm going to blame Paul. Nope. I can't blame Paul. I was going to blame him for not turning the overhead lights on. Because we had this happen one time before. Okay. 
let's wash the, no, let's not wash the brush. I lied. We're gonna paint the nose in black right now with the same brush. And just go right over your outlines and fill it on in. If you mess up, it's real easy to touch up. If you need to use the smaller brush, the little tiny detail brush, to get a nice clean edge around this, please do that anytime. There, cute. I like it. All right. Now we are going to get ready to start filling in gray around our raccoon. wanted to turn that overhead light off because it does get very hot and since I know it didn't fix anything I'm not gonna leave it on all right let's wash this middle size brush off and now we'll be able to see our raccoon start to appear a little bit better because we're putting some gray on and I make a medium gray so I'm gonna take my little palette here swing this around just a bit and we're going to mix white and black about equal parts um, you might need more white if you used a lot of it in the background that's okay I'm definitely gonna have enough black forever <laughs> but I just get the two together intermixing here until I get a gray that I like you've probably seen raccoons before and uh, they can uh, maybe they can be slightly different shades of gray I don't know they can in the painting world. That's the nice thing about the painting world. They can be whatever you want. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and dot out around the face down to these black ghosts. Spooky black ghosts. You know, our next holiday coming up is Halloween. I just realized that the other day. I'm gonna trace around the top of the ears here. Yes, we had 4th of July. And I was trying to do the math. No, I guess we have we have Labor Day in there. What am I saying? I totally forgot about Labor Day. Okay, so after Labor Day, we've got Halloween. So I guess we have a little while. Just ignore everything I just said. <laughs> I was missing. You know, today, or this has been a really weird year, as most of you know, with uh, COVID-19 and you guys are out of school and things are really whack. So... I'll forgive myself for that one, for forgetting about some holidays. All right, let's go ahead and trace out the shoulders. This is where you can bulk them out if needed. You can be like a football player, raccoon, or just a big, fluffy, cuddly, rackety coon. And I'm going to now trace from the, this side of the black ghost down along the chin. Don't worry if you still see green. We're gonna paint white over that later anyway, so it'll it'll be covered up. We won't have any green on our raccoon until we paint some of our forest leaves and decor. There, that works. Now, let's go ahead and draw this funny pattern they have on their face. It starts right above the nose. Now remember, if you're still working, if you're falling behind a little bit, please pause the video. Everybody go at your own pace. Just touching up something here. Some of you paint a little faster, some of you paint a little slower, some of you go medium speed, some of you match me perfectly. It doesn't matter. Sometimes I paint kind of slow and sometimes I paint kind of fast. Right now, I, I did a, one painting in a couple hours the other day and then I worked on another one, similar painting for I'm not even done with it. I've been working on it for like, this would be the third day if I worked on it today. Funny. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and dot right above the nose. Just right above it. You don't even have to leave any white space if you don't want to, or if you accidentally didn't, <laughs> kind of like me. I'm gonna come up, just dot a single line out between the eyes. Don't worry about your little green dot if it still shows. That will get covered up. You won't have to have a little green freckle there. And then I want to round around these ghost shapes. So, so we're leaving white space between. So I'll do this first one so you can see. See that? How I left like a big white eyebrow. 
and I'm going to match this up on the other side as, as much as I can. Feel free to use your little brush if you need to. Dot, 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 dot. Oh, even though he has no eyes or she it could be a she, she coon. There, it's looking really cute so far. Kind of weird looking, but very cute. <laughs> cute in a weird looking way because it's only part way finished. I'm going to make this part, this little narrow color that goes between the eyes. I'm just going to make it a little bit wider. In fact, you can make it so it's narrower here and then just gets wider up in here if you want. This reminds me of how foxes are patterned. So they have the white face and then they've got this orangey thing, stripe of color that goes down their nose and that's how they look so cute that way. All right, I want to um, fluff out some of the hair on the top of the head because I'm going to fill in all of this gray. You can do that anytime. Let's do that right now. You can do that anytime. Let's do it right now. Just fill it in however, uh, whatever brush you want to use, whatever brush strokes. I do tend to like kind of a dabby up and down brush stroke like we did on the background because that way you'll see a little bit of texture or whoever's looking at your painting will see a little texture and it gives the illusion or the suggestion of some ratty fur on the raccoon. And I think, you know, these guys wander around outside. They get into trash all the time. In fact, a lot of people call them trash pandas, which I think is hilarious because they do kind of have this panda thing going on and they do get into the trash. So that's the perfect name, trash panda. <laughs> so I always imagine their fur might be a little ratty. They kind of spend some time dumpster diving. They probably find some good stuff in there. All right. Wow, my phone is giving me a low battery signal already. I must have heavily used my phone today. I'm going to put a little more white on my palette because I really used a lot when I did the background. I just add a little more at a time rather than globbing a whole bunch on the palette. Cause you want to save these and use them for, you know, the next... Um, they're supposed to last three months, but sometimes you use a little more, sometimes you use a little less. So every time I'm adding more to my palette, I hate to have to throw away paint. And so it's a lot easier to just add a little bit at a time than to throw away tons of paint at the end of your session. That's always sad because <laughs> you can use that paint. Let's go ahead and make, um, so remember how we did this furry fun stuff here. Well, let's do it on the top of the head, around the ears, and right through here. So on the top of the head, I just flick upward into the background. And I do kind of, sometimes I'll make it lean over like this, and sometimes I'll make it go straight up, just so it looks a little bit ratty. I hate using that word. Let's just call it outdoorsy. <laughs> it's outdoorsy fur. And then around the ears too. Now you can use your small detail brush. That will give you more fine rats <laughs> more fine uh, little rugged <laughs> hairs you can see the difference you could even do a mixture of the two why not why not don't uh don't leave it with just one brush size go ahead and use whatever use more than one sometimes i'll add a drop of water to the paint as, especially on a hot day, like, like we've been having in the summer, it can dry out really fast and the water will help keep it nice and fluid. Now you don't want so much water that it's going to drip when you touch your brush to the canvas because then you would have drips of water. If you're using an easel and your canvas is upright, you would have drips of water sailing down the side of the canvas and your poor little raccoon would look like it's crying gray tears. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to flick some little hairs out in here to match this. Cute, adorable, I love it. And I'll match this over here. Now you can see I'm using my littlest brush. I found that I liked that one better for me, but it depends on your painting style. You might like a little bit bigger one. For the shoulders, my raccoon shoulders are already pretty ruggedy ratty so I'm going 
outdoorsy. So I'm going to just use my big medium brush and I'll add just a little bit more fluff. Okay, that works. That works. Let's see what I can do here. This light is gonna drive me insane. It's okay. I just need to take a breath. <sighs> Sometimes you need to take a breath too while you're painting. It can get really distressing, but it doesn't have to be. It shouldn't be. It should be a relaxing, good for your brain, good for your soul process. So if you do find that you are getting a little stressed out, which kids do as well as adults, just take a breath, take a pause and tell yourself, this is okay. I can do this and it's going to end up great. I have to do that with myself sometimes. Not necessarily in painting, but sometimes in other things in life. All right, let's paint in the chest. Here we go. I'm using my middle brush, but if that feels like it's taking forever and it feels like it's running out of paint way too quick, pick up your biggest brush, dip it in the same color, and look, you can cover a lot with that one. So I want you to decide here which brush feels like the good one for you to use. All right, let me dry this off. I, I am going to continue using my middle size brush and I've, I've remixed gray paint like probably three or four times now just because I never make quite enough. You just It's hard to guesstimate and I've been painting for way long, like over 25 years. You'd think I'd have a good clue now how much paint to mix, but I am always mixing more. I guess I'm just always learning. That's good though. I think in life, if you stop learning, then that's not good. You need to always be learning. Okay. Getting there. It's a lot of gray. A lot of gray. Later on, what we do on top of this gray is we put some lighter colored, small, fine hairs, which adds a nice level of detail and it also makes it look a little more three-dimensional rather than one solid color. It's easy to do and it's such a good step to do that you don't want to skip it because it does make it, you know what it does, it makes it look like your raccoon has natural hair or fur highlights, which you know they do. They have dark hair and light hair and it's all just sort of layered together. If you have a dog or a cat, take a look at their hair Unless it's like a solid white <laughs> pet, <laughs> you'll see different types of colors in the hair. Like my dogs are both red color. They look like foxes. And if I look at their hair, which I look at it all the time because it's always all over the floor and I'm always vacuuming it up. You'll see, like I'll see, oh, it's kind of blonde on, on one end and then really red on the other. So, you know, animals have natural highlights. Us humans, when you become an adult, if you want those, you have to pay for them. <laughs> and go to a hair salon. Okay, that's looking great. I can still see the green there. Not a big deal at all. I don't want you to worry about that because we are going to paint some white paint over here. I never will leave canvas white. I always, even if it's white already, I always paint white paint over it. And that is because I want the texture, which gives it a little bit of depth. And I just feel better not leaving anything bare white. That's just me. I mean, if you really want to leave it white, I'm not going to call you out for it. That's just me. Okay, let's go ahead now. And we're actually, it looks like, looking at my picture, so this is kind of funny. I had the painting. It's here somewhere in my space. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I'm going on pictures. And... Looking at this picture, it looks like instead of pure white, I made a very, very, very pale gray. Very similar to the color of if you've ever um, seen an oyster when it's open and you see the oyster body, which is really slimy and yucky. <laughs> That's the color. I would call it oyster gray. 
So I have my white. I'm going to pull some aside and mix just a little tiny bit of this gray I've been working with in there. So you get a really pale silvery gray. Oh, my dog's barking. I think that means my Amazon delivery is here. Yay. I ordered some stuff the other day, some decor for my house. And uh, yeah, shopping online is a, is a trap you can get into and I definitely did the other day. Okay, let's go ahead and fill in the inner part of the ears, cover up any green. Now look what I'm doing, I'm flicking this, let me align this canvas better, it tends to sink down. Flicking it into the outer edge here of this and I'm covering all the green, if there is any green showing. Same thing over here, flick it outward because the inner ear is, on most animals, there's hair on the inner ears, even on humans sometimes, and uh, <laughs> sometimes really long hair in humans. Um, I am, so I, I like to think about the hair is growing out a little bit. Pets and animals especially, it's probably keeping them nice and insulated and warm when they're outdoors, but they do all have hair inside their ears. And now I'm going to take, I'm gonna go along this, now around the nose. Now I do have a little green around the nose from my original outline, so I'm just gonna real carefully go around there to cover that up. And you can uh, even paint over this gray a little bit if you wanna if you want this to not be so harsh, I know on the original I, I kind of smoothed it out so it's less visible. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> it's just probably like I was in a zone and just kept going. But it doesn't need to be. And here I am doing it again. I don't know, my brain must apparently want this to be a little darker. Maybe I looked at a picture of a raccoon and saw one that had a little bit lighter area here. I think I said darker. I, I purposely, for whatever reason, made it, lightened it up a bit. Okie dokie. Now I feel like I need to bring some gray back in there. There we go. There. If I painted gray right on top of the wet light color, it blended right in nicely. And now if you have green outlines or whatever your background color was showing down here, this is where you carefully want to paint over those so we have none left, no outlines left. Already is looking real cute. If you accidentally get a little paint on top of the nose or in any of these areas, it's easy to accidentally paint over them when you're painting around them. Don't worry about that because you can just come back with solid black with a clean clean brush, solid black, and paint over that. And that's like a super easy fix. So no worries there. It happens all the time, even to people who've been painting for 25 years or more. Animals are, oh, I love painting animals so much. They're so fun to paint. I'll have to show you guys while you guys are working. A cute owl I painted the other day on paper. I went to the art store, which I always use Blick because it's, it's where I get most of my supplies for the art studio. And they have such a huge selection. By the way, I'm just going above the eyebrows here. They have such a huge selection of things that I feel like, oh, I want to try this, I want to do this, I want to do clay sculpture, I want to do stamps, I want to do paint pour overs, I want to do, and so you get a little overwhelmed if you like art a lot and you like experimenting. Uh, so I bought this mixed media paper. One of my employees has been doing pet portraits on this mixed media paper, which is, it's a big pad of paper that you can use for drawing or painting or watercolor or whatever you want, which I think is really cool because not all papers are designed to take paint and pencil. 
usually it's you've got a, a sketch pad that's for pencil and then you've got a certain type of paper that's for paint but this one is anything goes on it so I wanted to um, play around with this paper I got and I sat down and I this is the one I worked on I said for a few hours or so the other night and I painted this cute owl which I will show you in just a second here I will grab it right now while you guys are catching up I'll show you something funny about it oh boy my legs are really sore because I did a really hard workout oh. okay so this is my owl and I thought it was really funny because I, honestly, it just started off as a sketch. I was just going to play around. How does this paint feel on the paper? How does it dry on the paper? And I ended up making this really cute little owl. This is a saw wet owl. That's the name of the type of breed. And uh, so the paint on paper was super cool. You can see how I did all the little tiny fur-like brush strokes that we're doing on the raccoon. And then I got done and I realized I forgot some toes because they have four, four toes rather than three. So I have the one toe hooked behind the branch and the two in the front. And I thought, what? I didn't paint the right amount of toes. It felt so weird. I put it on Facebook just for fun and then I had someone offer to buy it, which I thought was super cool. Um, I would be shipping it to Alaska. I set it aside on a little couch I have here in my painting room. We keep the door barricaded from the dogs, but my young dog came in and he bit it up on the side. He took some, he wanted to taste this paper. So there's puncture holes, there's a bite mark here, a bite mark here, and another puncture hole there. So uh, that's my little painting story. So I might have to redo that one. You know, I kind of felt like I didn't really want to sell a painting that was missing some toes <laughs> anyways but the person buying it was a friend and they probably wouldn't have cared they probably would have liked it either way but I still feel kind of weird like this poor missing toe owl all right I want to bring some darker gray back down on this stripe you can see I'm gonna be fussing with this stripe a bit there's always something you'll fuss with for me today it's this and I'm just gonna fix it up and be done with that part. Yes, I'm not gonna touch it anymore because I'm fussing too much. All right, next up we are going to add some dimensional hair. This is the, the or fur, this is the fur I was telling you about where we take it from plain solid gray to, <laughs> to having some dimension, some natural little highlights. Now brush wise, you may want to use your detail brush for this. Or, if you're feeling like you can use a really light touch, you can use your medium sized brush. So a light touch means you're not gonna push down very hard because the harder you push, the thicker your lines are going to be. And for fine hair, we want fine lines. I am gonna start with my little brush. Actually, no, I lied. I'm gonna start with my medium brush just to see how it goes and see if I feel like I need to switch down a size. I can always, use the small brush for some areas where maybe I want some fine baby hairs. What I'm gonna do though here is kind of important. We're doing fine little brush strokes with very light pressure, which means we need pretty fluid paint. So I am going to take my light gray that I just was using, I'm gonna mix some water with it. Not enough water that this is gonna drip down your canvas, because again, you'd have light gray tears across your cute little raccoon. But it is, it's thinned out. And then I want to, before I touch my canvas with it, I know I have a lot, it doesn't look like it, but I know I've got a lot of water and paint on here, so I'm gonna dab it off. And I'll start here, right in the middle, using the very tiny tip of the bristles and very, very whisper light pressure. We're just tickling our raccoon. We're not, gonna, we're not poking it, we're just giving it a little tickle. So we don't wanna push down super hard. I'm gonna go down this little center area. Here's what it would look like if you decide to use your fine brush, your little little baby brush. So again, you, let's do this side that way. So I'll, I'll do this side this way so you can see the difference between the two. The pro of using this medium brush is 
you'll go a lot faster. It'll feel like you're not doing little tiny hairs forever. Whereas with this little brush, it kind of, it takes longer. But you get a finer brush stroke. So you go with what feels good to you. I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna use this middle brush for a while, and then I'm going to pick up the little itty bitty brush and do some finer hairs in some areas. Just remember, keep that pressure really light. Just very lightly touching your canvas. As you get to the ears, you can flick some little hairs into the ear. And let's you can put a little around the ear a bit, not too much because you don't want it to look like the whole ear is white or light color, light gray. For me, it's harder to do the left side because <laughs> of the angle. If you're left-handed, this left side is going to be a lot easier for you, but the right side will be a little more complicated. Funny how that works. Okay, so I've got the top of the head done with this brush. You might have to add water again and again to your mix here. I've got mine, it's kind of like if you've ever used watercolor paint, it's very thin thin like that but because I have I don't have a lot of paint on my paintbrush then you shouldn't get the runny stuff that comes off dripping down your canvas <laughs> and because my canvas is flat right now I'm not getting that anyway let me fuss with the light for a few more minutes you guys this is this video is going to be all about me fussing with the light this plant is casting a shadow okay Getting some fur down the shoulders and chest area. Some highlights. This raccoon goes to the local forest hairdresser and gets some fancy expensive highlights. <laughs> Why not? This is fun how you can kind of change the direction of the hairs. Like see these are sort of bending a little. These I could bend the other way and I could bend some more this way. So then it kind of gives it more of like a um, natural textured look like there's actual movement to the hair. Maybe the wind's blowing or maybe this raccoon has a lot of natural cowlicks <laughs> that's causing its hair to be wavy, curly, whatever. Just a reminder, super light touch. You can even just very lightly drag your brush. Sometimes it helps if you hold your brush back a little further. Like if you hold it way down here like a pencil, it's you're gonna press harder just naturally. So I, a lot of times I'll hold it way back here when I'm wanting to do light stuff. And it might feel weird at first, but you'll get used to the different ways to hold the brush. The more you paint, the more you're going to get used to that kind of thing and the more confidence you're going to have. And that is the number one thing with painting is building confidence. A lot of people say, I can't paint or I don't like to paint and I'm not good at it, that kind of thing. And really, people who are maybe even don't necessarily have a, what they would call or what they would say is like a, a big amount of art talent can become these amazing artists. I see it all the time. And it's just like the customers who come into the studio, we get some regulars who really get into it and they'll come in repeatedly. And as the instructor, to see them get so good at painting, it just tells me, you know, it's a learned thing. You can learn it. If you have natural art talent, it's just gonna be a little easier, a little faster process, but other people can learn it just by practicing and developing. The more you practice, the more you're, you will develop the confidence to where you know that when I paint this line this way, this is how it's gonna come out. Whereas when you're first starting, it's like, when I paint this line this way, I have no idea what's going to happen. So you will get to that point. The more you paint, I hope you paint a lot. I'm taking my little baby brush again, and I'm just gonna do in it, I'm just gonna do some little fine hairs here and there, not too many, because you can really go forever doing this. If you get tired, you can always come back like the next day and paint some more of these little fine hairs on. It's, I mean, it's a kind of a tedious process. 
Or you could just take it easy, the easy route, and leave your raccoon solid gray with no fancy forest highlights. All right, that's pretty good. I see a couple spots I missed a little. And now would be a good time to, if you need to touch up any of the black areas, I have a couple spots where I went over just a bit. Use either your, oops, that's not black, that's gray. Use either your uh, medium brush or your itty bitty brush, which everyone feels right to you. If you have a tiny little spot to touch up, use that little tiny brush. I've just got some spots around the edges. I technically should probably be using the tiny brush, but I'm being a rebel. There. And now that we've kind of fluffed everything out, if you feel like the cheeks need a little more fluff to match up, you can do that anytime. A little fluffy cheeked fella. Poor lady. All right. I think it's about time to make our raccoon be able to see. And then we are going to decorate it like crazy with flowers if you want. If you don't want to do flowers of any kind, leave them off. I and mean, it doesn't have to be decorated with flowers at all. Give it a top hat and a mustache. Why not? Okay. So let's, let's talk about the eyes. They are very simple little soap bubbles and they're way up here in this area. Mainly you just wanna make sure you get them lined up and get them as close as possible to the same size. Um, a little bit of difference is okay, but if you've got like this huge eye and then this tiny one there, unless you're going for a really silly raccoon look, uh, you might wanna paint, it over, paint over one with black and redo it. So let's go ahead and take our baby brush now. Make sure it's clean dried off. We're not going to use a lot of paint. So you're just gonna dip the very tip of the bristles. In fact, let's pinch those bristles into a nice little tight point. And we're gonna dip the very tip of the bristles in some white. So let's, I'll show you how much paint I pick up. See, it's just a little dot on the end of the brush. And this is one of those times that you want to use super light pressure. So very, very whisper light pressure. If you need to balance a pinky on the canvas or uh, stand on your head with your tongue out, <laughs> whatever, whatever works to help you get the really, really thin light pressure. That's what you want. So let's go ahead. I'll stop talking. I'm, I'm going to draw a circle. It's about the size of the large marble I was telling you about earlier, or a quarter. If you want to trace a coin, you can definitely do that. So I'll just go for it. Do, do, do. So first, like I said, it looks like a soap bubble especially when we add the shines to the eyes. Then they really look like soap bubbles. Yay, my raccoon can see out of one eye. <laughs> he feels more complete now. And oh, I dipped my hand in the yellow again. Apparently the, the yellow really wants me to wear it today. And it's on its own unmixed is not the most gorgeous color. It looks like mustard. It looks like I dipped my hand in mustard. Okay, other one. So here's what I do. I kind of, I'll line this up with the top and I just sort of float my brush over really slowly like I'm pretending to draw a straight line across. Make a dot. And then I'll turn that into my large marble size or quarter size circle. You can see I'm lifting my brush up a lot and that's because I'm looking at the other eye. Like how much space between here and here, is that right? It's never going to be exactly the same unless you use like a digital projector, but that's no fun. It's kind of fun to just do it on your own. It gives them more character for sure. All right. He looks a little scared. <laughs> he looks really funny right now. Um, just a little surprise, kind of like that owl I showed you. I can show you the one I was working on that I said I've been working on it for three days because it has crazy eyes right now. Uh, there it is. I was going to have it in the background and then I realized it would look kind of scary just staring at us with these soulless eyes. Here it is. 
You can see it's coming along pretty good, like the, the feather colors and stuff, but look at those eyes. <laughs> they are crazy right now, like zombie eyes. So those will get a black pupil later on. But you can see I love to paint animals and they do go through a really funny phase. Let's get some shines on these eyes, which will help make it look not quite so stunned. It kind of looks like the way a raccoon would look if you were driving in the woods at night and your headlights kind of shined on it as it's standing in the middle of the road. They do that. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. On this side, I'm just gonna draw a little scoop that kind of matches the roundness of the eye. So here's where it really starts looking like a soap bubble. And then I'll do one over here too that's just lined up. It matches the curve of the roundness of the eye. And then you could leave it like that, but I do like to do one more little shine, a little short one way over here, like even just a little dot is fine. And then on this eye, it's going to be on this side too. There. You'll never be able to unsee soap bubbles now every time you look at these. That is how it is for me because I once referred to them as soap bubbles on another painting I did in the studio of some animal. I can't ever unsee them as soap bubbles. That's all right, soap bubble eyes. Let's get a shine on the nose. So that as with most animals, like dogs and whatnot, they always have wet noses. And let's take a little white on the same brush and do a little shine, just a little curve on the top part of the nose here. <clears throat> Super cute. He doesn't look quite so stunned now. Only mildly stunned. And now I'm going to give the raccoon a mouth and then the optional rosy cheeks, which uh, we'll do those in a bit because I want to draw the mouth and let the mouth dry and then we'll do the rosy cheeks because what can happen is you paint the black mouth on and you're painting your rosy cheeks and somehow those two meet and then you've got gray cheeks, <laughs> which is not great. Okay, let's take your littlest brush. Wash it off if you haven't yet and dry it off. And just like when we painted the eyes and I showed you how to put a tiny little, like pinch the, the tip of the bristles to make a little point, and then you're gonna put a tiny little bit of black paint on the tip of those bristles. So not a huge amount of paint. You don't wanna glob it on there because we're doing detail work now. And I'm just going to draw, like in the middle, if I were to divide this nose in two with a vertical line, I would just keep going down a short distance you could leave it like that. That looks really super cute. I've seen a whole bunch of cartoons that look like that and even like kawaii type anime characters that have that kind of look. But to match the original, I just hook up on one side to make a smile. And then I'm going to try to match it up over here. However best gets you there. Aw, that looks so cute now. He's happy. Or she. Looking good. So you technically could walk away from this painting now and say, I'm not going to do any flowers. I'm not going to do any cheeks. I'm not going to do any little fuzzy things in the background, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, you could walk away and be like, you've painted a raccoon. That looks super cool. So while all of this dries, I'm going to show you how to paint. What I did in the background was uh, they look like stars, but they are, I wasn't thinking of them as being stars. I was thinking of them as being more like um, uh, cottonwood, cotton blowing around in the background, or you know you, those dandelion wish flowers that you blow on and they go everywhere. I was just thinking something summery. So I take my littlest brush, I'm gonna use the handle, and I'm gonna stamp, dip it right in white paint. I've got a little bit of clean white here and I'll stamp some dots in the background so it's going to look like stars or snowflakes and then I'm going to show you how to make, let me do one down here where you can see it better. I'll show you how to make a fuzzy one. So to make a fuzzy one, there I go dipping my arm in yellow again. I'm cursed today with the yellow. I'll stamp a dot here 
And then I'm going to use my finger and I really light, not pressing very hard, I just drag my finger around in a circle, which drags that paint out into a glowing orb. Let's see if I can, you can kind of see it there. And then I go back and I stamp a white dot in the center. So again, I'll show you over here on the side, a dot. Oops, that wasn't enough paint. Let me get a little more dot. Smudge it around in a circle with your finger. You're left with this little glowing orb thing. Gosh, that is not there. There. And stamp a dot in the center. You know, I'm complaining a lot about the lighting, but I keep forgetting that this monitor that I'm looking at up on the wall is really old and the color tube is starting to go. So hopefully that's it and it's not super overexposed for you guys watching at home. I might just be like repeating myself and complaining the whole time for something I don't need to complain about. Hopefully that's the case. Okay, so you can do these little smudgy, fuzzy things anywhere you want, mixed in with just plain dots. This is exactly how I do a cosmic galaxy sky. Now I'm gonna be designing the kids painting for next month, for August. That's a hard word to say, August kids crate. I would love some suggestions from you. It doesn't even have to be for August. It can be for further on. Um, in the fall, I will probably do some fun like pumpkins, owls, that kind of thing. But I tend to love painting animals, but it's not the only thing I can paint. So if you, if you wanna do something completely different that's not an animal, let me know. Let me know what you'd like to paint. And I will see if I can do it. <laughs> If enough people like that idea. What have I done for kids? Let's see. We've done some outer space theme paintings. We've done an alien. We've done uh, octopus, a blowfish. Hundreds and hundreds. I'm just trying to think of them. Goldfish. Lots of animals. Animals are really popular. Unicorn, that kind of thing. Okay, so I've got lots of little fuzzy... Cotton, these are the things that make you sneeze in the springtime, give you the runny nose and allergies, but our raccoon can apparently withstand that. We're good. Now let's talk about these rosy cheeks. You have a choice, I keep saying it, you can leave them off or you can paint them on. I do like to use my finger to paint them on just like we did with the stars, but I want to make a really, really pale pink. And if you're going to do the flowers, make a decent amount of that pink. Again, I'm going through the white today. This is dry, so I'm just going to pop it down there. Oops. Went down the side. Painting is a messy process. I hope you guys are uh, making sure you have your space covered with plastic or paper or something. Because even someone like me, who seems to know what they're doing, <laughs> can make a big ol' mess. Okay, so I'm going to use my middle size brush, make sure it's clean. I'm going to make a pale pink, so it's going to take very little red. The red is very potent, so adding the white in there, you're going to add quite a lot of white to very little red. And I'll use this color for some flowers. So it's going to do double duty. So that's nice, and you don't have to just mix a tiny bit that you're only going to use once. Here's what I'm going to do with that. I have my brush that has my pink on it. I'm going to just dot my finger to pick up some wet paint. Dot it here, and I'm going to dot it here, and while it's still wet, I work carefully, I'm going to smudge that around into a little circle. If it doesn't show up, which mine doesn't seem to show up super great, I'll add a little more red to my pink. And try again with the darker. Oh, that looks better. The light pink was okay. This looks like... A lot more noticeable and that's so cute I just think it's like the cutest little thing and then we're gonna paint flowers lots and lots of flowers unless you don't want to do flowers or you just want to paint a few let me grab my little mixed-media paper that my dog seemed to want to eat I'm gonna show you how to do a flower shape so on this painting, I have pretty much a daisy shape. 
And I like to, you can either pull, you can mark a center with a dot and you can pull each petal towards it as you go around in a circle. Or, I'll just keep going, finish that up before I start other ideas. And then I'll usually come back in with another color for the center. So that's a pretty simple flower. Um, so I showed you how you can pull towards the center. A lot of people also like to, let me do one in blue, dot the center first. Even though the center might end up being a different color, you can dot the center out first in your flower color just so you have something to work from. You might prefer to pull out. And you can experiment with pressure on your brush. So you can start by pushing hard and then lifting the pressure. Push hard and lift the pressure. Or you can just push and go around in a circle. That makes kind of a cute rounded petal flower shape, like a pansy or something like that, cherry blossom. Um, or you can use your little baby brush, and some people prefer to just draw them out this way. If you want, you could do the center first, like a little circle, and then draw the petals around there. That one was a little crazy. Got a little big. Uh, let's see, other flower types you could do. Let me have a look at my photo. Yeah, I pretty much just did daisies and these, these and these. And that seems to do it. I have what on the, the original. Uh, so that is I have flowers, and you probably can't see on my phone. Let me zoom in along the ear and then along the neckline, like a necklace. You can just put them on the ear if you want, or you can do load it up. You can do both ears and the necklace. And then I paint some like leaves and ferns and green that just tuck in there with it. So I'm going to use my middle size brush. And you guys can mix whatever color you want. So here's some little uh, tips for mixing colors. Red and blue, you may already know, make purple. So you mix them together and more red is gonna make more of a plummy purple like I have here. If you add more blue to that, you're gonna get more of a violet. So a deeper, the blue is going to make it more of like a grape soda color. So that's that one, or and you can leave that and do flowers in that color, or you can add a little white. And look what happens there. You get lavender, depending on how much white you add. Uh, for the green that we'll do in a little bit, we will be mixing dark blue, and so the sapphire and daffodil, the yellow and blue. Look at that, that makes such a beautiful green. And then you know from painting the background, when you add white to that, you're gonna get this light minty color if you add a lot of white. Um, another color, let's, let's mix orange. Orange is always a good color for flowers. There's a lot of really pretty wild poppies, they're called California poppies, that are the prettiest orange color. I don't know if I can make that exact shade because nature makes the best shades of color. All right, so I do red and yellow. Probably a more yellow than red. Much more yellow. <laughs> I'm gonna use up all my yellow. So this is pretty close. That's that's a nice color. I'd say the California poppies have a little bit more of a yellow tone to them, but I don't wanna use all my yellow. Um, and then the other thing you can do is you can take white and add it to that, and then you have peach. So look at all those colors you can make. And literally, it's kind of endless. You can keep going and going. I make color charts all the time with my paint. Here's one I did with watercolor where I am just charting like what happens when I mix turquoise and red? What happens when I add brown to that? And it's really a good thing to do if you're going to paint a lot. You make your own color wheel and you write down what you've added. I try to even write down amounts like one part red, two parts yellow. So color charting is always a good thing. Now I've got good colors to use for flowers. My pink is drying up, so I'm gonna make some more. 
So I showed you purple. Purple is your blue and red. Add white to it to make a lavender. I could add a little blue to this. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that's a fun color. That's kind of on the lavender spectrum, but much more pastel than like that one. I'm gonna use that for my first flower. Let's, let's do some flowers around the neck first, because the ones on the ear, uh, doing those right out of the shoot can go several different ways. So let's, let's practice, do practice flowers down here. And in fact, if you have a piece of paper and you want to practice some on paper first, I'm always a fan of that. If you want to just go for it, let's start one right here. I'll make a dot for the center, which will end up being a different color later. And I'm going to go around and make this sort of star pattern. It can go into the face a bit because that's what would happen if you had like a tight flower collar or flower lay on. And then I'll usually do a couple in the same color before moving on. This one I'll do like fatter, rounder petals. So then I'll wash my brush and I'll do a couple scattered around in another color. Don't worry about the flower centers yet because we're going to do those later after things dry a bit. I really like that orange I made, so I'm going to go for that color. And I'll just move along so I don't mix the two quite yet while they're still really wet. Boink, boink. You can make noises while you do it. Swish, swish, boink, boink. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Okay, so I'll do the dot. I'm going to do one right here. Just a little itty bitty flower. This color is a little bit see through. I can see the black through the orange. So that tells me it's just a transparent mix, and I will probably put another coat of paint on it after it dries, and that will make it more opaque. I'm a big fan of white daisies with the yellow centers, so I'm going to plan out a couple of those. White paint yet again. I think white was our shining star paint color in this painting. Let's see. I'll do one right here. Dot. And then I'm going to go out. Now daisies can have these long pointy petals. They're slightly rounded at the edges, but if you want to do that, you could try that with your littler brush. Or just go slower. I suppose I'm going a little too fast. I'm doing like calligraphy flowers. That one actually turned out really cute and daisy looking. I like that a lot. Now I've got white on my brush. I'm going to just mix it in some of my light pink I made. Because, I mean, I can make a lighter shade without having to wash my brush. I'm just being lazy, I guess. Lazy in making another color. I'll do one right here, tucked way up here in the corner, kind of like that one. Oh gosh, they're going to look like earrings. <laughs> Two different colored earrings. These I want to dry a little bit before I start crowding in other colors so that I'm not having weird colors mixed together. So I'm going to work up here now. Now you might feel more comfortable with doing flowers up here. Keep in mind, you can use your little brush. And what color am I going to use? Let's see. I'm liking the blue, but I might add a little white to it since white is the color of the day with the paint here. So I made this a lighter blue. I'm going to draw a center and then I'll just go around like I have been in that sort of, I think I called it a starfish pattern. That's like a cute little blue cornflower. In fact, it's that exact right color. There's a type of flower called a cornflower. And so a lot of people will call like certain colors of blue. Oh, that's cornflower blue. And that's because that's what it looks like. And you know, I love that so much. I'm going to tuck a little one down here. Oops, I didn't draw the center. I just went straight for the starfish shape. And you can do that if you feel comfortable. But look at these two tie together. I like that when you have color balance. So if you have a certain color up here, it is nice to put it down in here too. It just keeps the eye moving across the canvas when people are looking at your painting. So their eye is not drawn to one particular spot only. And I'll do another one. Now 
Don't worry if you have sloppy flowers. You can always cover them up with another flower or a well-placed leaf. I have done that myself so many times. It's unbelievable. Well, like, a, I'll end up with a weird background and I just put a well-placed tree in there. We always say trees are the, the artist painter's band-aid. <laughs> Because you can cover up a multitude of painting sins. Okay, so I'm going to add... That. Remember I made the peach earlier by taking the orange and mixing a little white? I'm actually going to add that on top of here. So I get a little bit lighter tone. And the white is going to make it more opaque, so which means it's going to cover better. So now I can no longer see through and see black fur through the flower, which you wouldn't usually have. Oh boy, I did a lot of flowers on the original. I was just looking... How about some yellow flowers? I have nothing in yellow on here. Now I was telling you earlier, this daffodil yellow on its own is actually should have been titled mustard yellow because it's it's kind of mustardy color and I'm wearing it all over. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'll scrape off a little and I'm gonna mix white with it. I am running out of paint here. So the white will make it a lot more of a prettier lemony shade. It's amazing how that transformed just by adding a little white. So I'll take that color and pop in some yellow flowers. And you can use this color to put centers on any of the flowers too. So I'm going to do the center dot, which I keep forgetting to do. I keep just going for the petals, but sometimes that can be a challenge to get a good shape. Okay, and you know, while I've got this yellow on my brush, I feel like purple flowers with a yellow center, that's a nice combo. Purple and yellow are complementary colors, which means they look really good together. So maybe these are like, they remind me of pansies. Pansies have a yellow center with a purple flower. I feel like they kind of disappear in the raccoon's fur a little bit, if you have that problem ever. I would take like a darker shade in your little brush and you can literally, I need to add a little water to my paint, you can literally just kind of trace the outside edge of the petals really lightly. And there, suddenly it stands out. You might think of some other clever way to make it stand out and you absolutely can do that. Other things you can do is like sometimes the petals have a little crease right down the middle from the center. That's a cute way of making a flower. You can do that on any of these. Like I could take the yellow ones and remember I mixed white with yellow to get that pretty lemony shade. Well I could use just plain mustard yellow <laughs> and I could outline the edges of those and it'll be a brighter color and make it stand out just a little bit more. So there's an idea. Let's get some more flowers up around the ear. All right, what color do I want to put up there? I really love this white daisy and I only have one, so I'm gonna put one up in the corner. And of course, my white has gotten polluted with other paint. So I need a little more. So good color to use up here. Okay, so let's see, I'll do the center dot and you can pull out from that dot or pull towards it. Honestly, just go with what feels natural. Maybe none of it feels natural. Just go with whatever feels better. How about that? Sometimes I'll just do a combo of both. I love taking daisies, the ones that grow in the wild with the long, long stems and making a daisy chain to wear like a little crown. Usually there's little bugs that start crawling around. That part's not fun. Okay, I'm gonna put a pink flower up there. Kind of a, maybe a reddish pink because I have a lot of light pink, but I don't really have a raspberry pink, which would have quite a bit more red in it. So that's just white and red, but a lot more red than white. And let's just do a little guy here, a little cherry blossom type of flower. Hey, I did red, white, and blue. 
I didn't even notice that until right now. That's funny. Well, I'm going to put some green leaves up there in just a bit. But for now, let's put some centers on all of these. And you get to pick what color centers you want. If you need to give any of these flowers a second coat of paint, like maybe as they dried, they became a little see-through, please do that anytime. We're almost done with this. But I'm going to go ahead and, like on the, the daisies, I'll just give them a plain yellow center. I didn't even mix it with white. I'm just going for the plain yellow. This one's still a little wet. Let's see how that works. I think it needs to dry just a little bit. I guess that worked. And now down in here, I'm using my baby brush. White uh, makes a good center on some of these darker flowers. It just stands out really nicely. Um, also, black paint is a very good color for some of the flower centers. I love it especially on pink flowers and red flowers. The one up here. And what should I do for the blue flowers? So the natural tendency is to, I think a yellow center would look good on those blue flowers. White would look good. Let's see. Decisions, decisions. I've got this dark grape soda color, which was the red and blue. It was a little more blue than red. That's a good color to put on there, I think. So it looks like I just have these two yellow flowers last. And remember I was telling you how purple and yellow are such good complementary colors. So how about, let's do that. Let's mix, I'm gonna make a little bit of a darker lavender by adding white to this violet. And I'll just do a center there. I think on top of the yellow, it's maybe not gonna look super purple. Le it looks less purple than I wanted it to, but that's okay. Sometimes the painting dictates itself. All right, that looks really cute. I do like this, so I'm going to go ahead and add those little lines from the center down the flower petals just on these big purple ones. You can do it on any of them, but I felt like these two sort of match, so I'll do that. And now our last little thing we're gonna do before we sign our painting and be done is we're gonna add some sort of fern shapes and leaves. Oh, I've got some fun ones on there. All of them I did in the, the yellow and blue mix, which makes this gorgeous, vivid emerald green. And I can tell I need a little more yellow because my yellow has red mixed in it. I am using up the paint today. There we go. Make sure you cap these pretty tightly when you're done pouring paint out. And again, that was yellow and blue. I'll just mix it right in this little section where I mixed it last. It just had dried up a bit as I was painting all those flowers. Now I'm probably only going to use my baby brush. I'm using my middle size brush just to mix the color because it works like a paddle and you can mix it a lot, a lot more color than you can with that little brush. Now this, here's what I do when I have a lot of paint on the brush. I just sort of twist it while pulling on my palette. That way I have get most of the paint off the brush without wasting it in the water. I'll flip this around. Maybe I'll stop getting yellow on my arm. And let's talk leaves. Leaves are shaped like, if you've ever eaten an almond, they are shaped a lot like an almond. And so like, I just pick little spots. Like here's a good spot to make a little almond shape or a little, some people think of it like an eye shape. There's a good one. And then I'll put one, like maybe a, a slightly rounded almond shape here. Cause you know, a lot of flowers have different, um, they don't all have pointy almond shaped leaves. Some of them have rounded, cute leaves. Some of them have weedy looking foliage, weedy leaves. Like I think daisies have really weedy looking <laughs> leaves. I'm not gonna do weedy looking leaves. These will be like fantasy daisies with pretty leaves. I'm gonna do another little leaf here that kind of goes into the face just a bit. That's okay if that happens. 
Um, on the daisy, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a fun little curly cue thing. So I'm going to come down and curl into a little swirl like this. Kind of looks like a little lizard tongue, but it's not. <laughs> it's part of the flower. And I, on one side, I'm going to take and I just do a little, a little uh, swipe of the brush outward. So what I'm aiming for here is kind of a suggestion of more of a fern type of shape. There actually is a type of fern that grows like this. It's called a fiddlehead fern. And they are really cute. And you can actually like stir fry them and eat them. I've never tried that. But I've had friends who've done it and I've seen pictures of it done. <laughs> so let's let's get a I like this. I think this is fun. I sometimes like to do some that go into the background too. So I'll do like oh this one's going right around this star. That worked out pretty good. And you don't always have to do the little straight lines that come out. You can do something that is like a little ball. So it looks like some kind of little sweet peas sort of thing. This little guy, or girl, lives in the woods and has access to all the best flowers and ferns. So this one's living it up. I'll do a little leaf here. Now if you want to, you can mix in, like I did just one shade of green throughout the whole uh, painting. But if you wanted to, let's see what happens if I mix a little white. Maybe a little white and a little yellow to get a different shade of green. Like I'll lift this up so you can see. See this ended up, oh, there we go end up being a slightly different shade of green not quite as minty light as the background but a little bit lighter and that's kind of fun to tuck a few of those in there they're not going to show up as much as those vivid dark ones but I mean you could do the little swirls you don't even have to do the the dots or the swipey things on there you can just have literal little curly cues that looks adorable I'm just going to keep doing that. <laughs> and I feel like the bottom is done now. And I just need to add a few things up here. Maybe three leaves. How about two leaves and one of these? So I'll put a leaf going into the background. And how about one this way? And one little sweet pea swirl. Where should that go? I'm going to have that come out right here. Boink! And I just do those little bot, bots. I was going to say dot and I was going to say ball. <laughs> and I said them both at the same time. So these are bots. They're ball dots. They're bots. And this is my last little thing and that looks so cute I just love it I want to wear this outfit sometime but with clothes not for <laughs> so that's it I hope you guys had fun with this I had a lot of fun anytime we do something with flowers I think our last painting yeah last painting was a hedgehog that had a lot of flowers going on I promise I won't always do flowers I guess I was just feeling very flowery with the the spring and summer here so one thing that's super important is to sign your painting. You are the artist. You created this step by step from scratch. It was only you. If your mom helped you, you can still sign it or your dad helped you. You can still sign it yourself. They can just be a contributor, a silent contributor. <laughs> you get to choose the color to sign the painting with. And I really love this cornflower blue. So I'm going to, I thought I had some that was still wet, but I don't. So I'm going to have to remix a little. One last little paint mix. I didn't get away from being done with mixing paint, apparently. I'm mixing it with my little brush, which is always a pain because it, it's so small and it gets a lot of globby paint on it. So I don't want to sign my painting with that globby paint. I want to take my towel, clean it off, and then re-dip the tip of the bristles. So I just pick up, just like when we did the mouth and the eyes, I have just a tiny bit of paint on. In fact, I'm going to wash mine off, sorry. All right, so I'm just gonna take that tiny little bit of paint and I put my initials down in one of the lower corners carefully because 
this painting is more about the raccoon and the signature should just be a little small thing. You don't want like to cover up all your beautiful work and all your flowers with a giant signature, which is, it's easy to do as a kid. You kind of go big, you like to go big. That is it. I hope you guys had a great time. I had a great time. Our next painting will be a sea turtle. It is super fun. If I had it in this room, I would show you, but I don't want to get up again and <laughs> grab another painting. So keep painting. Um, click like on the video and you can click the little uh, subscription icon so that every time we post a new video you get notified and you can uh, watch whatever we have. It's fun to just watch. You learn a lot just by watching and the things we say too. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and keep painting and we'll see you next time.